Hello class, today what we're going to talk about is inverse functions. And an inverse function is basically a function that undoes the original. It's the opposite of the original, if you will. So what we're going to do, find the inverse of f of x equals 3x minus 1. Step 1, well, method 1, two ways to do this, is to use inverse operations. So what we have here, we have x times 3 and then subtracting 1. What we're going to do is the opposite. We're going to undo that. So instead, we're going to have x and then plus 1 and then divide by 3, which gives us f inverse of x equals x plus 1 over 3. That's how you read this. This is f inverse. This is not f to the negative 1. This means the inverse of x. All right. And you can have like this, or you can divide this out and have 1 third x plus 1 third. Either way is fine. This is perfectly okay. All right, that's method one, and it's not the best way to do it. I mean, it's great if you've had experience and stuff, but for most of us, we're going to use method two. What we're going to do, instead of having f of x, we're going to put y right there. Then we take x and y, and they swap places. Now you just get y by itself. So we have to get rid of the one, so we add one. Then we get rid of the three, so we divide by three. And x plus one divided by three, so we end up with the same thing we had right there. And then we change our y back to an f inverse of x. All right. And that's it. Now you can check your work by graphing it. If you graph these two equations and they are a reflection over the line y equals x, then you did it right. If it's not a reflection over the line y equals x, you didn't do it right. So you got to go back and figure out what you did wrong. All right. So what I want you to do is to work these three out with the video paused, and then graph them to check your work, and then come back, see how you did. All right, let's see how you did. There's your answers. If this is what you got, good job, you can fast forward a bit. If this is not what you got, then let's find out why. Number four, first, change f of x to a y, switch positions of x and y, get y by itself, so you divide by two, and there it is. Alright, x over 2. Number 5, change f of x to a y, switch positions with x and y, then get y by itself. So subtract 1, divide by negative 1, and you end up with negative x plus 1. And yes, in this case, your original is your inverse. It is its own inverse. That happens sometimes. Not often, but it does happen. Alright, number 6. Change f of x to a y, switch positions of x and y, get y by itself. So we add 2, and to get rid of that 1 third, we multiply both sides by 3. And remember, when you multiply 3, you got to distribute to the x and to the 2. All right. Let's take a look at this. f of x equals x squared, where x is greater than or equal to 0. So, we're going to worry about this in just a minute. Let's get y by itself first. Change that to a y, swap positions with x and y, get y by itself, so we take the square root. Remember, everything has a positive and a negative square root. Okay, so now we've got y by itself. Let's take a look at this domain restriction right here. With inverses, since this says x is greater than or equal to 0, and we switched x and y right here, we're going to switch this one as well. So instead of having x greater than or equal to 0 in our inverse, we are going to have y greater than or equal to 0. All right. So we only want the positive values of y, so we don't really care about the negatives. The negatives go away, we don't care. And if you'll notice, since this is only half of the function, our inverse again only wants to be half of the function. That way it's a reflection over the line y equals x. All right. So real world situation kind of stuff here. What we have is we have need to find the inverse of the function that represents the surface area of a sphere. And this happens all the time, where in the real world you'll have some formula that says, if you have this, you can get that. But we already have that, and we want to find this. And so we have to invert our function, invert our formula here. And this, the way we do this is we do not change our positions of our variables like we did with x and y. Instead, what we do, instead of having s equals, we want it to have r equals. We want to have the radius. 
because we want to know what is the radius if the surface area is 100 pi square feet. So we start off here, we find the inverse of the function. So we take our original, and this time we're going to get r by itself. So we divide by 4 pi, and then we take the square root of r, so r is by itself. Now instead of having a positive and negative square root, since it's talking about radius, well, that's a unit of distance, and you can't have negative distance. You can't have negative length. So we only want the positive square roots. But now we have r by itself. So now if we have this surface area, 100 by square feet, we can just plug it into s and figure out what r is. So we plug the 100 pi in for s, and we have the square root of 100 pi over 4 pi. Well, 100 divided by 4 is 25. Pi divided by pi is 1, so 25 times 1. So we have the square root of 25 equals 5. So the radius of our sphere is 5 feet. All right. Horizontal line test. What this is, this is a method that we can use to test to see will the inverse be a function without having to graph the inverse. Because sometimes the inverse of a function is not itself a function. And the horizontal line test works a lot like the vertical line test, where you're just moving this horizontal line to see does it touch the graph more than once. And if it doesn't, it passes. So here you see this passes the horizontal line test, and the inverse will pass the vertical line test. So since this passes the horizontal line test, the inverse is a function. You see that's true. Here the parabola, which is a function, does not pass the horizontal line test. And so that means that the inverse will not be a function. And you see here, the inverse does not pass the vertical line test and is not a function. The horizontal line test, we can tell these answers without having to graph them. So it's a shortcut. So let's take a look at this one. We have 2x cubed plus 1. We want to know, will the inverse be a function? So let's graph the original. 2x cubed plus 1. This does pass the horizontal line test, which means the inverse will be a function. But now we got to find it. So we take this, change f of x to a y, change positions with x and y, and now we get y by itself. So we subtract 1 from both sides, divide both sides by 2, and then we take the cube root to get rid of the cube. And there it is. Right, there's our f inverse. And to check this in the graph, here you see this is the correct inverse because it is a reflection over the line y equals x. And the f inverse is a function just like the horizontal line test predicted it would be. We're going to do another one of those. So we have two square roots of x minus 3 is it a function. So let's graph it. Yes, this is a function. Pass the vertical line test. Is the inverse a function? Yep, the inverse of function passes the horizontal line test. So it will be a function. Now, does we need to find the inverse. So what we're going to do, change this to a y, the f of x to a y, and change positions with x and y. Get y by itself, so we're going to divide the 2 out. So we have 1 half x. We need to get rid of the square root, so we square both sides. We have 1 fourth x squared. Get rid of the negative 3, so we add 3. So there's our inverse function. Except you'll notice this is only half a parabola, and this is the equation for a whole parabola. And that's not a reflection. That's no good. So what we have to do is restrict the domain. Which half of this parabola do we want? Well, we want the part where y is greater than 0. This is the inverse, so instead of having y greater than 0, we want x greater than 0. And just so you can see the graph of it, here you see that is a reflection. If you don't restrict the domain, you'd have a whole parabola over here, which would not be a reflection of half the parabola. So I want you to pause the video, work these out, graph them to make sure the domain and range are right, and then come back to see how you did. All right, let's see how you did. There's your answers. Hopefully this is what you got. If this is what you got, congratulations. You can fast forward a minute. If it's not what you got, then let's find out why. So number seven. First, change f of x to a y. Change positions with x and y. Then get y by itself. So we divide by negative one. And then we take the square root, which is going to be positive or negative. However, looking at our original, it says x is less than or equal to zero. 
which means we want y to be less than or equal to zero. So we don't want positive values, we want negative values. So we only want the y's that are less than or equal to zero. We only want the negative square roots of negative x. Number eight, change f of x to a y, change positions with x and y, get y by itself. So we need to subtract the four, divide by negative one, and then we cube root both sides. So we have this. Now our original does have a domain of all real numbers and a range of all real numbers, so we don't have to mess with the domain restrictions. Number nine, change f of x to a y, change positions with x and y, get y by itself. So first we're going to square both sides, and then we subtract by two. Now on this one, this would be a whole parabola. I only have half of it. So here I only have the part where y is greater than 0. So I need to restrict this to where x is greater than or equal to 0. That way we have the reflections. So you always want to graph these and check your reflections. Make sure they really are reflections. And I just hit a button. I don't know what I hit. Let's try to get that back. There it is. Sorry about that. All right. So last thing. If you're given two equations, how do you know if they're inverses of each other? This is really pretty simple. If they're inverses and you plug one of them into the other one, the everything will cancel out except for the x. So we're going to take g of x and we're going to plug it into f of x. All right. So we're going to take this x plus one minus uh, divided by three and we're going to plug it into the x, like so. So we have three times x plus one over three minus one. Multiply the 3 in here, so the 3's cancel out, and you're just left with x plus 1 minus 1, while x plus 1 minus 1 is just x. And so everything cancels out except for the x, so g and f are inverses of each other. Just so you can see, you can check this with g of x, or f plugged into g, and it doesn't matter which order you do it. So we're going to take this 3x minus 1 for f of x, and we're going to plug it into g. So we have, where the x is, 3x minus 1, plus 1 divided by 3. So minus 1 plus 1, that cancels out. We just have 3x divided by 3, and 3x divided by 3 is just x. So again, you see everything cancels out except for the x, and so these are inverses of each other. You don't have to do it with both of them. You can just do it with one. It doesn't matter. So what I want you to do is work these out. On 10 and 11, I want you to find out are those inverses on number 12, you need to find the inverse of the distance uh, formula and then find out how long it would take something to fall 50 meters. All right. Pause the video, work these out, come back and check your answers. All right, let's see how you did. Okay, number 10. We plug in G for X. And so we have x minus 5, plug that in right here, so we have x minus 5 plus 5, well, minus 5 plus 5 cancels out, and you just have x. Just so you can see it, you can plug it in the other way, and it still comes out to x. So these work, so it is an inverse. Number 11, I'm going to plug f into g this time, because it's a little bit easier that way. So 2 times 8x cubed would be 16x cubed, and the cube root of 16x cubed is 2x cube root of 2, which is not x. So it didn't work. It didn't cancel out. If you plug it in the other way, we have this, 8, and then we take the cube root of 2x and cube it. So the cube root and the cube root cancel out, and we have 2 times x, 8 times 2x, which gives us 16x, and again, it doesn't cancel out. Take it away. All right, on this one, remember, we don't change your positions on real-world formulas. We just get the other one by itself. So we want to get t by itself, so we divide by 4.9, and we take the square root. So there's the inverse function, and now we want to know how long it's going to take to fall 50 meters. So we take that 50, and we plug it in for d, and we end up with approximately 3.19 seconds. Right. And that is inverse functions. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and I will see you next time.